Hello and welcome to Circle Time today. The letter we're going to be talking about today is the letter Q. Q looks like this. Remember, for every letter in the alphabet, there are always two, an uppercase and a lowercase. So this is the letter Q and we're going to practice writing it. So let's take a look over here on the board and I'll write the uppercase or capital letter Q and you can practice too. So you're going to make an O and then you're gonna give it a tail. That's it. So it's an O with a tail. That's the uppercase Q. Let's write it on the handwriting house, okay? So since it's an uppercase letter, it needs to go upstairs and downstairs. So there's our O and then we're gonna give it a tail. That's letter Q. It's an O with a tail, an O with a tail. Would you like to practice? It's an O with a tail. Remember, if you don't have paper, you can always sky write an O with a tail. Okay, now let's talk about the little letter Q. The little letter Q looks like this. Big Q had a big O. Little Q has a little O. So you're gonna make a little O and then you're gonna make a line straight down and then give it a hook. So it looks, if I cover this part up, it kind of looks like an A, but you just keep going down into the basement and then bounce up just a little bit. So let's write the little lowercase Q on the handwriting house, okay? So we're gonna start downstairs and then we're gonna make our circle downstairs and then we're gonna do our line all the way down into the basement and then bounce up. This little Q is actually a teenager letter. It's gonna go down into the basement to hang out. All right, so here we go. It's an, a little O with a line down and then bounce up. There it is, there were, there's some little cues. I hope that you're practicing too. And if you want to, you can get that handwriting house printable. I'll put the link below. Okay, so that's our letter for the day. And did you know what Q sounds like? It sounds like this, qua, 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 as in quiet. Q says qua, qua, qua. What, what sound does Q make? Will you help me? Q says qua, qua. Qua, as in quiet. Q says qua, qua, qua. Well, let's play the quiet game, okay? So in a minute after we do our letter of the day, we're going to talk about telling time. And one of the parts of time is seconds. So I'm going to count down 10 seconds, and I'm going to see if you and I can play the quiet game for that long. Are you ready? Okay, if we're going to count seconds, we need to count slowly like this. One, two, three. Okay, so here we go. Ready, set, go. Oh, that was hard. It was hard to be quiet for 10 whole seconds. Wow, that was very good though. Q is for quiet and you did a great job with the quiet game and counting seconds, which is what we're going to talk about now, telling time. We're going to start off pretty easy though. We're just going to be telling time to the hour. Now, let me show you this clock that I've drawn on my big board, but there's something missing. See if you can spot what's missing on my clock. What's missing? Hmm. The numbers are missing. So will you help me count the numbers? We're gonna, I'm gonna write them as you count and we're gonna go all the way around until we have it filled in. All right, so here we go. Help me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so we're all the way back around, so we're done. But there's something else missing on this clock. Do you know what it is? I'm gonna give you a hint. What are these? 
these are hands. And did you know that a clock has hands? The two little lines that come out from the middle are called hands. One is long and one is short. So today I'm going to put the long hand pointing to the 12. When the long hand points to the 12, we say o'clock. Can you say that? O'clock. One more time. O'clock. Okay, so now I'm going to put the little hand pointing to the one. So let's see if we can tell what time it is. It's one o'clock. Can you say that? It's one o'clock. All right, let's change the little hand. These are the hours. And so that little hand is called the hour hand. Let's move it and make it point to the three. Okay, what time is it, everybody? It's three o'clock. Nice job. Let's try another one. Let's make it point to this one that looks like a snowman. That's number eight. So what time is it? It's eight o'clock. Good job. Let's do one more. Let's make it point to the 10. So what time is it? It's 10 o'clock. I have a worksheet I'd like for us to do together. The numbers are a little bit small, so maybe even maybe you'd like to even pause and get um, the sheet printed out for yourself, but we can do it together. I'll tell you the number. So the first one is the little hand is pointing to the one. So what time is it? It's one o'clock. Good job. Let's try the next one, okay? The little hand is pointing to the six. So what time is it? It's six o'clock. Good. The next one has a little hand pointing to the eight. What time is it? Eight o'clock. Good. The watch way down here has the little hand pointing to the five. What time is it? Five o'clock. Good job. Let's try the next one. The little hand is pointing to the two. What time is it? Two o'clock. And one more, the little hand is pointing to the four. What time is it? It's four o'clock. Wow, you did a great job telling time to the hour. Now it's time to talk about our shape for the day. Now for the past few weeks, we've been learning 3D shapes. 3D shapes are not flat, they're fat, they can be held. And today's shape is the pyramid. A pyramid looks like this. And it's pretty simple. A pyramid is really just a square and four triangles. One, two, three, and there's one in the back, four. So a pyramid is one square and four triangles. Maybe you've seen a pyramid on TV or in pictures. Later, we'll take a look at some real examples. And also later this week, we'll make a pyramid with paper. Okay, so now it's time to talk about our color. Our color for the day is the color blue. We're going to sing a song about blue, and it goes like this. B-L-U-E spells blue. B-L-U-E spells blue. Hi-ho, did you know? B-L-U-E spells blue. The big sky is blue. The ocean is too. Hi-ho, did you know? B-L-U-E spells blue. How do you spell blue? B-L-U-E spells blue. Well, I have some paint here. Can you tell me what color this paint is? It's blue, but guess what? I'm not gonna use a paintbrush today. I'm gonna use something else. And what we're going to make is a super cool blue quill. Q says qu as in quill. And I'll tell you what a quill is in just a minute. But before I do, let's see if we can make one of these. It looks like a feather. So what we need to do is take something super funny to paint with. What is this, everybody? 
It's a toothbrush. I'm going to be painting with a toothbrush. But don't worry, this is not my toothbrush. It would be pretty funny if I painted my teeth with this toothbrush now. They'd be all blue. But all you have to do is take an old toothbrush or a new toothbrush if you want to buy one just for painting like I did. And then you're going to dip it into the blue paint. Make sure that it gets all the way down on the toothbrush. And then this is the fun part. You're just going to go back and forth and make it look like a feather. Did you know that you could paint with a toothbrush? It makes really cool designs. So once you get your feather painted, you're gonna let it dry and then you're gonna cut it out like this. And then you're gonna tape it to a pencil or a marker or a crayon. And you have made a quill. Now, a long time ago, people didn't have pens and pencils, so they made pens. They would take a feather, and a feather is hollow. The little tube on a real feather is hollow. That means there's nothing inside. It's kind of like a straw, and so they would dip that, that feather into ink, and the ink would go up into the tube, and that's how they would write. They would write with a quill or a feather pen. Well, we made a quill today. We painted a feather and then we taped it to, I taped mine to a pencil, but you can tape it to a pen or marker or crayon, and then you can use it to write and practice your letter Q today. You can also use it to write stories and that's what we're gonna talk about today. That's our theme. So have fun making your quill. Now it is time to talk about our theme and I have a book to read to you today. It's called Ralph Tells a Story. This book is by Abby Hanlon. Ralph Tells a Story. My teacher always said, Stories are everywhere. And the kids in my class were always finding them. But every day at writing time, I thought really hard. I stared at my paper. I stared at the ceiling, but I could not write a story. Everyone else could, but not me. Ah, I have no story. So I looked for other things to do. I went to the water fountain to get a drink. I roamed the hallways. I tried everything. But then one day after getting sent back to my desk, I decided to beg Daisy for help. I can't write a story because nothing happens to me, I said. Are you kidding? She said, I've written tons of stories about you. She began pulling her stories out of her desk. Look at this one, she said. Remember the time you let me brush your hair? And this one, remember the time you knocked down all the crayons? Oh, and remember the time you painted your nails with the black marker? I thought, I'll never be a great writer like Daisy. Then Daisy stapled all her stories together. Click, click. Wow, she said. This book is really almost 13 pages. Click, click. Can I use the stapler? I asked. I was really good at stapling. But you have nothing to staple, said Daisy. You have to find a story first. So I looked for stories out the window, in the aquarium, in my desk. And when my teacher wasn't looking, I looked for stories on the floor. But still no stories. Lying under my desk reminded me of lying in the grass at the park. I closed my eyes and imagined I was at the park, just like that time that a little inchworm crawled on my knee. The sun was shining right into my eyes. Squinting, I picked up the wiggly inchworm and looked at it up close. And that's where my teacher found me. What's your story? She asked. I opened my eyes. Um, um, I saw an inchworm. Wonderful, she said. I can't wait to read what you wrote. But there was no inchworm story. I sat down and tried to write about the inchworm, but right away I got stuck. Hey, Daisy, do you know any inchworm stories? But she just rolled her eyes and kept on writing. And then the teacher said, writers, come to the rug, time to share. Ralph, you go first, said the teacher. I pretended that I had lost my paper. It didn't work. 
I walked to the front of the rug. It took a long time. I held my paper against my chest so no one could see it. Um, I was at the park, I said. An inchworm crawled on my knee. It was quiet. Q is for quiet. My heart went thump, thump, thump. That's when I looked at Daisy and Daisy said, well, really, Ralph, did it feel squishy? Did you take it home? And then everybody started asking me questions. Did your mom let you keep it? Did you touch it? Was it a baby? Was it a girl? Did it tickle? Did you name it? Wait a minute, I thought. Something did happen with that inchworm. Well, I picked up the inchworm and decided to name it Nick. I built Nick a house, but he just inched away. So I followed him, which is why I didn't notice that someone was following me. And then all of a sudden, this wobbly, crazy baby grabbed Nick and put him in his diaper. I tried to be calm. Come on, baby, I said really nicely. Give Ralphie the inchworm, but it didn't work. Was this the end of Nick? But then I noticed Nick was escaping. He crawled right up the baby's stomach. Quickly, I rescued Nick and ran. And we spent the rest of the afternoon doing nothing together. The end. Everybody <gasps> clapped and cheered. They loved the story. Show us the picture, Ralph, someone said. And I wasn't embarrassed, embarrassed anymore, so I did. That was last year. This year, I write stories all the time. I keep finding stories everywhere. And do you know what? You can find some stories too and write about them today using your quill. And if you can't write the words, just draw pictures and tell the story to your family. I hope you have a great day today. Don't forget to watch today's calendar time and weather video. And I'll see you tomorrow for circle time. Goodbye.